Hello, my friend. Thank you so much for making the broadcast a part of your day today. And I want to thank you for being one of those believers who wants to grow in the grace and knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. That ought to be the heartbeat of all who know Christ as Savior to want to become more like the Lord Jesus Christ. And I hope that our radio programs are helping you personally towards that goal. Right now, my Bible is sitting open to the book of Titus in chapter 3. There are only three chapters in Titus, and we are quickly coming to the end of our verse-by-verse study of the book of Titus. If you can, get your Bible out and join me. Get something on which to jot some notes. And by the way, I have a gospel tract in my hand. Now, does that term, is that a new term to you? A gospel tract is simply a short written presentation of God's plan of salvation. O beloved, God says in his word that he is not willing that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. Somebody told me the gospel. Somebody told you the gospel. And now that you and I know Christ, it is our job to tell others the gospel. And what a great tool a gospel tract is. You can use it personally. Your local church can use it as part of a evangelism outreach that is churchwide. But man, we got to tell people the gospel because unless they hear, they cannot believe. I want to tell you about one gospel tract here in a moment and urge you to get some gospel tracts from us. But right now, let me lead us into the Bible study time with uh, this opening statement. There is a word used very rarely in local churches, and I think it ought to be used suchly. Uh, The word nobody likes to use, and when they hear it, they kind of put a shudder in their backbone, and that word is excommunication. The phrase I prefer to use is the phrase church discipline. Right now, I know of three local churches dealing with church members who are living clearly unbiblical lives, and they're unrepentant about it. Actually, all all three churches are dealing with immorality in the life of a rather prominent church leader. Now, doing church discipline is never easy. God did not design it to be. Church discipline is never to be fun. God never wants it to be. But doing church discipline for the right reasons, in the right way, and with the right heart attitude will be necessary from time to time. And today's passage deals with false teachers in a local church, and that church discipline will probably need to be done. It's not a fun passage, but it's really important for us if we're going to have a healthy church. Get your Bible, Titus, please, in chapter 3. I mentioned the gospel tract here a moment ago. And by the way, this ministry of Bible tracts here, that is the parent company, Bible Tracks Incorporated. It's a parent ministry behind Bible Tract Echoes, the broadcast. For 80 years, we've been taking the Word of God all over the world, but we're, our job's not done yet. There are Half the world has never heard the gospel. Tracks are a tremendous tool. The tract in my hand right now is entitled, Will You Live Forever? Will You Live Forever? Do you know that some Religious groups say that, no, you will not, but God says you will, either in heaven or in hell. This gospel track, Will You Live Forever?, begins this way. It answers the question, yes, you will live forever. The question is, where? It can be heaven. It's up to you. And it goes on to explain with great clarity that the dead shall rise, the dead shall be judged, but Christ is the judge. The judge came uh, some 2,000 years ago and gave his life on Calvary's cross, shed his blood, so that the ones that need judgment can be saved from judgment and be given the gift of eternal life. Oh, beloved, you need the gospel tract in my hand. Will you live forever? At the end of my broadcast, my announcer is going to come back on, give you some ways by which you can give to us your name and your mailing address. Do it today, and we will send you a sample packet containing one each of all of our English gospel tracks. The sample packet is absolutely free of charge. As a matter of fact, if you see some tracks in there you want more of, we'll send you those free of charge. We're able to do that because God's people, many of God's people, and local churches have taken us on as one of their missionaries. You might want to pray about that as well. Well, friend, be ready when my announcer gives that information at the end of the broadcast, all right? 
Okay, if your Bible's open, Titus chapter 3, verse 10 says this, A man that is a heretic after the first and second admonition reject, knowing that he that is such is subverted and sinneth, being condemned of himself. Oh, I be- beloved, I remember all too vividly the very first time I had to lead a local church in removing two members from church, our church roles due to sin. I was the ripe old age of 25. The issue back there in 1978 was immorality. Little did I know the personal attacks that would come to me because of going through this, but also little did I know the long-term godly consequences that would come to our church as a result of doing this there in that small town. Here in Titus 3 and verse 10, the word heretic is used. The issue here is false teaching. Someone or some ones in the church, their churches there on Crete, were teaching things, important things that were contrary to God's word. On Monday's broadcast, I gave a sample list of those kinds of doctrines that ought to be included here and thought of as a, a heretic when these things are not being taught. Well, on Monday, I identified uh, the word recognized, and I'm going to use three R words. On Monday, I used the word recognized and said that local churches need to identify or recognize people who are teaching error. You don't let that slide. You got to confront it. My second R word is the word resist. False teachers must be resisted. The word used here in verse 10 is the word admonish. The most basic idea of the word admonish means to train by words, to train by words. False teachers must be confronted verbally. You cannot simply pray about the matter. Praying ought to be a given in all this, but church leaders uh, must confront false teachers and talk and explain their error. Not only is talking through the issue necessary, verse 10 talks about talking, but it also talks about the number of times we do this. Verse 10 says that there is a first and second admonition. This frankly tells me or indicates to me four things. Number one, we talk with the hope of winning the false teacher back to truth. We will never see that happen if we begin by attacking the person of the false teacher rather than the things being taught. Sadly, all too often, these kind of meetings begin with a hostile tone, and of course, in that kind of environment, you're never going to turn a false teacher around. A second thing I see is that we give the false teacher time to think. We talk with them and we show them the truth. We reveal how what they're saying and teaching is wrong based upon God's word. And then we give them a chance to think and to pray and to let the Spirit of God work. Thirdly, we must meet again and talk through this doctrinal issue again. The hope here is that the false teacher will turn around and come back to truth. And if that happens, glory, we've won a brother. If the teacher refuses to change, then the local church needs to act, which comes to the fourth thing. It's the word remove. Remember, I'm using some R words. I talked about, firstly, we must recognize a false teacher. Secondly, resist false teachers. But if the false teacher will not turn around and accept truth, thirdly, we must remove that false teacher. Beloved, listen to me. According to the scriptures, There are a few reasons for which church discipline needs to, must take place. False teaching is one of these. But please notice we call it church discipline. We don't call it pastoral discipline. We don't call it elder or deacon discipline. When the step needs to come to remove somebody from membership for whatever the, the, the biblical reasons are, and it's well thought through and dis- explained to the local church, whenever it comes time to remove somebody from membership, it ought to be done by the entire local church. I say that because that's what is stated and clearly stated in the Word of God. Matthew chapter 18, verse 17 says that an openly sinful church member who will not repent needs to be brought before the local church, not the church board, the local church. 
Over in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 4, it says that the action of removing a member due to unrepentant sin is to happen when, the verse says there, we gather together. That's not a private meeting. It's an open one. Is it a fun meeting? No. It's one that ought to be prayed over much. It's not publicized but the local church needs to handle this matter so many in the local church will learn and will stay in truth, stay in right living. Oh, my friend, the goal of confronting sin and false teaching is to keep members, not lose them, but if no repentance happens, then the health of the local church must rise above any personal feelings we have towards the wrongdoer. The health of the local church must rise above the fear we may have in doing this and the repercussions we fear that may come from this. Whoever will stop being our friend and all of that. It's time for us to do and obey the word of God. Now, these verses are anything but happy verses, but they will help the holiness and the healthiness of a local church. This kind of passage is not a fun passage, but I add this personal note here. I am watching here. I'm in my 65th year of life. I'm in my, oh, 43rd year of gospel ministry. I have watched many a local church who have done church discipline with the wrong attitude and the church exploded. They were doing it unbiblically. I have watched some local churches out of fear not do church discipline, let sin stay, and eventually the church exploded because they were unbiblical. Obeying the Word of God is critical. Doing the Word of God with a right heart, a broken and a contrite heart, is critical. And sometimes we, in fear, don't do what God tells us to do. In the day and age in which we are living, it is required of God that you and I be found faithful in matters like this as well. If you and I are going to maintain the health of the gospel in our community, we must begin with the health of the church teaching and the health of the daily life living of those who are part of a gospel preaching church. Dear friend, if you're not part of a gospel preaching church, you're not a member of one, and you know Christ, may I politely say you are out of the will of God. You ought to be a part of a church. God says so. You ought to join. You ought to be baptized, I think, by immersion and become part of a local church, become accountable, and share in the responsibility. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes, a ministry of Bible Tracts Incorporated. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of all of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. That's 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. A faster way to contact us is to go to our website at BibleTracksInc.org. That's BibleTracksInc.org. There you will find more information about our ministry and details on how you can support Bible Tracks Incorporated. Thanks for listening, and may the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.